Hey guys, I'm back this week with another great menu for you. I'm gonna show you how to make a fall dinner party inspired by some of my favorite French comfort foods. And the best part is, it can all be made the day before. It's a make-ahead dinner party. How great is that? I can't tell you how many times I've made the mistake of throwing an elaborate dinner party only to spend the whole evening in the kitchen instead of visiting with my friends and family. And I always vow never to do it again, and I always feel terrible that my poor guests never got to see me. So that's why I developed these make-ahead dinners. I have a few of them in my repertoire, and every time I pull them out, I always have a much better time at my party. We're gonna kick things off with some piping hot gougères, a type of French cheese puff that is both elegant and delicious. I'll show you how to make two classic French cocktails, a Kir and a Kir Royale. For our main course, it's hashi parmentier, a comforting French casserole made with seasoned ground beef and topped with fluffy mashed potatoes. Then I'll show you how to serve a traditional French cheese course with all the trimmings. And for dessert, it's bistro-style homemade chocolate mousse, a recipe that will render your friends speechless. It's that good. If you're new to King Community, welcome. We've loved hearing all the comments from a lot of you new users who've just discovered the channel. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. In the coming weeks, we're gonna have all kinds of great holiday ideas, menus, recipes that you won't wanna miss. So be sure to click that subscribe button. One of my favorite French appetizers to serve in the fall, when the weather is a little bit chilly, is a gougère. A gougère is a traditional French cheese puff that is light and airy and savory all at the same time. It is a great hors d'oeuvre that people are always impressed by, and the nice thing is is that you can make them in advance. Here's how you do it. You're gonna start with a heavy bottom saucepan. To that, you're gonna add some water, butter, and salt. You're gonna bring that to a boil just until the butter is melted and it's bubbling away. Then you're going to add your flour. At this point, you wanna get a wooden spoon and just stir it up. It's gonna be clumpy and gooey and feel sort of like paste, that's okay. It will come together and begin to pull apart from the sides and actually turn into a dough. You'll start to see that it'll get glossy on the outside. And that's when you know it's ready for the eggs. Add them one at a time, stirring with that wooden spoon after each egg just to make sure that it's completely incorporated. It is a little bit of work on your hand, but that's okay, it's totally worth it. These things are delicious. And then the final step is you're going to add the cheese. Traditionally, a gougère is made with Gruyere cheese, but you could also use Swiss. Stir that up just until the cheese is melted and well incorporated. Then you're gonna transfer the dough into a pastry bag. Now here's a tip. Whenever I'm doing anything in a pastry bag, I'd like to have a Pyrex pitcher nearby because it allows me to steady the pastry bag while I transfer my dough. You just peel back the bag, put in the dough, and just add it so that you have a pretty full pastry bag, and then twist it to try to get all of the air out of it. Take your pastry bag and pipe out some rounds. You don't wanna go much further than like the size of a quarter. In the past, I've gotten like very enthusiastic about these hors d'oeuvres because I love them and I've tried to make them bigger and they just sort of fall apart and get deflated. So really a quarter size will do it. They're gonna puff up in the oven and become much larger. After you pipe out all your mounds, here's another little tip. You wanna take a spoon with a glass of water and just lightly tap the spoon into the water and tap each top of the round. That will help sort of smooth out the edges and make them nice and round before they hit the oven. Take a few leaves of thyme and sprinkle that on top and then top it with some fleur de sel salt. Now if you can't find fleur de sel, a little kosher salt will do as well. I like fleur de sel because I think it's not as salty as regular salt and it just adds a nice crunch to the gougere once it's baked. If you wanna make these ahead, here's what you do. You're gonna take your whole tray and pop it in your freezer. I usually let it freeze overnight, but it probably would freeze up in about four hours or so. Once your gougères are frozen, you can then take them and transfer them to a Ziploc bag and keep them in your freezer until ready to bake. Then, when you're ready to bake them, you just pop them in the oven and bake for probably 10 to 12 minutes until golden brown. Because these hors d'oeuvres are so delicious and so elegant, I like to serve them on a pedestal. It just kind of gives them a seat of honor. When you pass these hors d'oeuvres around, people will ooh and ah, they're so delicious, they're warm, they're salty, they're cheesy. It's the perfect way to start off a French evening. And the best thing to go with a gougère is a kir. Some of my favorite memories in France involve sitting around a table with my in-laws enjoying a kir. The French have perfected the art of what they call the aperitif or the apéro, where you spend time talking and catching up and drinking these cocktails. It couldn't be easier to make. 
All it is is some creme de cassis, which is a very syrupy black currant liqueur, and some white wine. And the white wine can really be an inexpensive wine. It can be a Chablis, it can be a Sauvignon Blanc. You just want something kind of light and refreshing, nothing too heavy like a Chardonnay. Now, for fancier occasions, maybe during Christmas time or if it's somebody's birthday, you can turn it into a Kir Royale, which is essentially creme de cassis and champagne. And if you don't want to use champagne, you can also use either Cremant, which is a sparkling French wine, or Cava or Prosecco, which are also good sparkling wines as well. If you really want to kick off your French party with a traditional flair, you can't go wrong with a Gougere and a Kir. One of my favorite French comfort foods is hashi parmentier. Hashi in French basically just means ground, so ground beef is the basis of this dish. And Parmentier comes from Monsieur Parmentier, who was a pharmacist back in the 1800s who popularized the potato. So this dish, I guess, is an homage to him. You want to start by boiling your potatoes. You want to start with cold water. The reason being is that you want the potato and the water to come up to temperature at the same time. That's going to give you the fluffiest potato. While your potatoes are boiling, you can get on with your meat mixture. In a Dutch oven, you're going to saute up some white onion and some ground beef. Just saute on all sides until it's well browned. To that, you're going to add some tomato paste, some beef broth, a bay leaf, some red wine, garlic, and herbs de Provence. Mix that all together and put on simmer just until all that liquid is evaporated. At this point, your potatoes are probably done. The tendency when you boil potatoes is to kind of dump the whole thing out in a colander and rinse them off with cold water. That actually is not the best thing to do because what's going to happen is those potatoes are going to get kind of waterlogged and become mushy. Instead, you want to take the pot, pour out the water, and leave the potatoes inside. Then cover them with some paper towel and put the lid on. What's going to happen is the paper towel is going to soak up all the moisture of those potatoes and leave you with dry potatoes that will create a fluffier mashed potato, and that's what you want. Then you're going to transfer those potatoes into a mixing bowl, add your butter, and beat until nice and fluffy, and then add your half and half. Once the potatoes are all mixed and combined, you can set them aside. At this point, your beef is probably done. You want to transfer it to a large gratin casserole dish. If you don't have something that looks like that, you can also use a 13 by 9 pan. That will work just as well. And then top with the mashed potatoes. Cover your mashed potatoes with some Gruyere cheese, and then you're going to add some paprika and salt and pepper. At this point, you're going to cover it with some foil and pop in the fridge until you're ready to bake. The day of the party, when you want to bake your casserole, you want to keep it covered and bake for about 20 minutes. Then for the final 10 minutes, remove the foil and then that will crisp up the potatoes and melt the cheese. When the casserole is done, you definitely can serve this oven to table. Get out a trivet or even a wooden cutting board. You can place your casserole right on the table and let your guests dig in. In true traditional French spirit, after the main course comes the cheese course. And if you really want to be French, you will serve cheese with salad. That's really the French thing to do. And I just think it's a delicious way to kind of transition before dessert because you have the savoriness of the main course. You've got real sweetness with dessert. It's sort of in between. In my opinion, the best cheese tray has three types of cheeses. There's a brie, a goat, and a blue. One of the things I love to buy when I'm in France are cheese trays. They're inexpensive, they're lightweight, and I can put them in my knapsack on the way home on the plane. But if you can't find a cheese tray, you can definitely use any kind of flat basket, or you can even use a cutting board. And because I live in California, we're lucky enough to have some grape vines in the backyard. They never give us any grapes, but they do provide us with some beautiful leaves, which I love to use for my cheese trays. So I will line the tray with some grape leaves. And if you don't have grape leaves, don't worry about it. You can actually buy parchment grape leaves. And there's a link in the description to where you can get them online if you're interested. What I like to do, which isn't very French, this is my American side coming out, and my husband always likes to remind me the French don't really do this, but it does look pretty, is to take grapes and put grapes in the center of the basket and then some figs. That way you have a nice little centerpiece for your cheese tray. On top of the leaves, I then add my cheeses. I put one piece of cheese on each grape leaf facing out. That way it's easy for your guests to slice off a piece. 
One thing you want to do, which is also very French, is when everybody sits down to dinner, you want to take the cheese out of the refrigerator because it's very important that the cheese is at room temperature when you serve it. That's when it's going to be at its most flavorful. I then add some decorative cheese knives, and that's all you have to do. And if you want to be really French, you'll serve a salad with your cheese course. And the salad does not need to be elaborate. In fact, simpler is better. You just whisk up a nice French vinaigrette, which is mustard, vinegar, grapeseed oil or olive oil, salt and pepper, and a shallot. That's all it takes. And then toss that up with your favorite lettuce. And then don't forget the bread. So you definitely want to serve a sliced baguette on the side so that each person can have one or two pieces with some cheese and some salad. And that's it, a classic French cheese course with all the trimmings. Definitely give it a try. It's a fun way to kind of channel the French spirit and offer something different to your guests. One of my favorite French desserts is chocolate mousse. You see it in all the bistros, served on those little dessert carts in those big white crocs. I love the idea of serving chocolate mousse at a dinner party because it's elegant, and for something like this, it's also easy because you can make it the day before. So here's how you do it. You're gonna take chocolate chips and butter and put them in a large microwave-safe bowl. Microwave them in 30-second increments just until the chocolate and butter is melted. You wanna kinda of keep an eye on it because you don't wanna burn the chocolate. Once that's melted, you're gonna add egg yolks. Now, at this point, if the thought of using raw eggs freaks you out a little bit, that's okay because this recipe works just as well with pasteurized egg yolks. And that's actually how I make this. And you can see it in the egg section of the grocery store, those little cartons, and it'll say pasteurized egg yolks. It looks like a little half and half container. Go ahead and try it. It works just as well, and they're fully pasteurized, so nobody has to worry about eating raw eggs. Then you're gonna add some sugar, vanilla, and cognac. If you don't drink alcohol, you can either leave the cognac out, or you can add a little bit of coffee. Stir that all up just until nice and smooth and set it aside. Then you're gonna mix your egg whites. Now again, if you don't wanna use raw eggs, just look for the liquid egg white product in the egg section of your grocery store. This recipe works just as well with the liquid egg whites. You just need to beat your eggs a little bit longer than traditional egg whites. Just takes them a little bit longer to fluff up. And then you also wanna add some cream of tartar. So the cream of tartar, just because it's an acid, works to kind of make those peaks stiffen up a little bit better. You don't have to use it, but I would recommend definitely using it if you're using the liquid egg whites. They definitely need a little bit of help. Once your egg whites are nice and fluffy and they have soft peaks to them, you want to fold them into your chocolate mixture. If you've never folded anything before, it basically means taking the egg whites a scoop at a time and just lightly stirring them almost in like a figure eight motion. That will help keep as much volume to the egg whites as possible and not deflate them in the stirring process. Then you're gonna clean out that bowl and add your heavy cream. Once your cream is light and fluffy, fold in the whipped cream into your chocolate mousse mixture and then transfer to your serving bowl. I like to use a nice white big casserole bowl that I have, just because it reminds me of France, the way that they serve it kind of bistro style, family style. But you could also take that mixture and pour it into wine glasses or martini glasses. Don't be alarmed if the mousse mixture seems too thin at this point. It actually will firm up when it sets in the fridge. So the mousse needs to be refrigerated for at least four hours in order to get that kind of mousse-like texture. All the more reason to make it the day before. I also think family style is a great way to serve a dessert because your guests can tell you how much they actually want. Remember, we've had Gougeres, Hashi Parmanche, we did a cheese course and salad. They may not have that much more room for dessert, so just a little dollop will do them and it's just a wonderful way to cap off a delicious evening. So if you would like to make this menu, here's your game plan. Now remember, this is a make-ahead dinner party, so in order to be carefree the day of the party, you are gonna have to spend some time in the kitchen the day before. But not to worry, you will thank me later, it's totally worth the effort. The first step is to make your hashi parmanche. Make your mashed potatoes and saute your ground beef. Whenever I have a lot of cooking to do, I always start with the most time-consuming dish first. That way the day gets easier as the day wears on. Allow the potatoes and beef to cool, and then assemble into your casserole dish. Top with the cheese and spices, and then keep covered and placed in the fridge. I also like to write the bake time and temperature on a post-it note and stick it on the foil. That way, when the party is in full swing, I don't have to go back and look up that info. Next, you'll want to make your dough for the gougeres, 
pipe them out on your tray and place in the freezer. Once frozen, remove them from the tray and place in a Ziploc bag. Then it's time to make the chocolate mousse. Mix the chocolate mixture, beat your egg whites and fold them in. Then whip your cream and add all about a half a cup to your mousse. Place the reserved whipped cream in an airtight container and keep refrigerated. This will be used for your garnish once your mousse has set. Cover and place the mousse in the fridge in order to allow it to set up. Two hours before the party, assemble your cheese tray. Cover it loosely with foil and place in the fridge. Mix your vinaigrette in the bowl that you'll be serving your salad in, that way it's all ready to go, and cover and leave out at room temperature. 30 minutes before the party, get some music on. For a party like this, I think it's really fun to play a lot of the classic French music. People like Edith Piaf or Georges Brassin or even Serge Gainsbourg, all of those people would be great additions to a party like this. In fact, I've even created a playlist on Spotify, so if you want to know what my picks would be, friend us on Facebook and you can get the Spotify playlist there. So because this is a make-ahead meal, you might be looking for something to do on the party day. So if you are, here's a quick and easy centerpiece idea. Sometimes in the fall, it can be hard to find flowers, so I really like to decorate with fruit. Things that are in season, like pomegranates, apples, pears. You can create really pretty centerpieces just by putting a bunch of them together in some decorative bowls. I also like to use some greenery, either cut from my yard or something that I can find at a florist, just to add a little greenery to it too. These arrangements will last longer than cut flowers, and if anybody gets hungry at the table, they could eat them too. So there you have it, a classic French dinner party. I hope you guys will give this one a try. I think you'll agree that the make-ahead menu is the way to go. But leave me a comment. I want to know how it goes. I love hearing from you. And bon courage!